Hi everyone, this is Dr. Mike, host of the free iTunes podcast, Psychiatry Secrets Revealed with Dr. Mike, but that's not why I'm here today. This is another Saving Savvy episode, and in this episode, I'll look at my continuing saga of trying to find a replacement for the Adobe Creative Cloud. Now, as you may recall from a video that I did a number of months ago, I canceled my subscription to the Adobe Creative Cloud basically for a couple of reasons. One, I really wasn't using it to its full potential. I was spending money every month and I was just not using it. In fact, I was using Photoshop the most instead of Lightroom. And I really didn't like Lightroom that much. I kept on trying to use it on little projects and I found it, for whatever reason, I know people love this software, but I found it kind of clunky and slow and I kept on going back to Apple's Aperture, which is a much simpler program but suited my needs very well. However, Apple's Aperture hasn't been updated for a number of years and I had this great fear since this actually used a catalog that one day they would update the Mac OS and I would just be stuck because Apple's Aperture wouldn't open up and I would be kind of screwed. So I started this process of looking for other software. And a number of people listed various software that they liked in the comments which was extremely helpful so thank you very very much. Of course I couldn't try all of them but I appreciate all the comments. And I did try two of them. Um, and what I really wanted was software that didn't have to have a catalog where I could just edit right in the into the into the file and keep things separate. That just works better for my organizing system. And I know they have sidecars and people hate sidecar files, but it doesn't bother me. So I was looking for software that would allow that and software that would meet my basic needs. So the first software that I tried was Corel Aftershot Pro 3 or something, which was very reasonably priced at, I think, less than $60. And it's a very much a full feature package. It's a little clunky and the great, you know, when you try to adjust stuff, it feels a little coarse and crude, but I was able to get some very good results from that software. However, I ran into a huge problem and it was just not stable on my Mac. So I have a 2000 2017 Mac with an i7 processor and 16 gigabytes of it's a it's a, a MacBook Pro 16 gigabytes of memory. So I have a reasonably good computer, but this program just crashed and crashed and crashed, often re requiring a reboot, and it just it just was not suitable. And in fact, I finally gave up on it uh, when I had spent all morning editing some photos, some architectural photos for a client. And then I was trying to export them. It was probably about 50 photos that I was exporting. And it just continually crashed to the point that I had to export each file independently for it to get it to, and you know, do 50 files independently, it's no fun. So I thought, yeah, this is not worth it. So someone had recommend DxO Photo Lab, and that's the product that I'm going to talk a little bit about today. I don't claim to be an expert in Photo Lab. I'm just getting used to it, but I'm loving it. Uh, I really like this software. Again, it it allows you to edit right in your in your folder, so you all the little sidecar files go in there. So wherever I'm editing and whatever I'm wherever I'm storing the files, no problem, uh, which is good for me. I know again, people sometimes don't like that. I like it. So what I needed is software that I could easily and quickly uh, rate because I'll go through one rating and then I'll rate those photos and that's the second rating and the third rating are the photos that I use. Now this program does that extremely well although you can't use things like keywords it doesn't have facial recognition for that kind of stuff but other than those two things I can rate by star or I can rate by a green or a red little light uh, and so that works just quite well for me. The other thing is is that it really has a lot of sophisticated features so every time you put your little SD card in, it's going to figure out what camera and lens you're going to use and then it will load a profile for not only that camera but also for that lens. And we all know that DxO does all these tests on sensors and on lenses, so they have a huge database. And as soon as you load that stuff up into your into your computer, now all of a sudden it's going to do automatic lens correction and it's going to defringe and I think take care of vignetting and whatever else that it can find automatically without you having to do anything. Naturally, you have a full complement of controls and you also have some really nice, more sophisticated controls. You have a dehazing filter. You have a filter, um, I think it's called, what is it called? Smart something, a clear view. Um, and what clear view is kind of a local contrast filter where it will bring up the shadows without destroying the um, highlights. Uh, you have a wonderful denoise tool that is just superb. Now, I will tell you, unfortunately, it only works with RAW. I am mostly a JPEG shooter, but 
because I, I don't really see the benefit for the kind of work that I do, uh, taking the extra space and stuff with RAW. However, I definitely see myself using RAW in cases where I, I'm going to deal with a noisy picture because I have now this great denoise program built into this DxO Photo Lab. They also recently bought from Google the Nix software, and so they've incorporated a little bit of that in their in this new Photo Lab software where you have. Um, uh, the ability to do spot areas, um, you can do some uh, graded uh, gradations, you can do some little circular areas and do multiple different, it's not really masking, but it's sort of like masking that you can do and that's really helpful if you just want to brighten up someone's face or you want to make the sky a little bit bluer or whatever. So all that's built in too. And I would say that I this program is supplies me about 98% of what I need for all of my photo editing. I still do have to go to a photo editor every once in a blue moon, but in the last, I would say, couple of months that I've been using it, I've only gone once to a photo editor and I used um, Sarif's Affinity Photo, which I'm using as my, my Photoshop substitute. Also very, very nice software, very inexpensive, just a tremendous deal. So let's go into a little, that's not even a tutorial, let's do a little demonstration that I did on this software just to show you what it looks like and what you can do with it and why I think it's awesome. And let's do that now. We are in the DxO Photo Lab, and this is the Elite version, which adds a few functions. For instance, it has a great denoising program or app lit for um, raw files. It also has Clearview, which is a great dehazing program, and it also has the, the ability to modify presets and do other things. And on this program, I also have um, added DxO Viewpoint, which is another $80, but it's a fantastic perspective program. So I've been doing a lot of real estate photography, and um, just it's been a lot of fun, but of course that means you're using a wide angle lens. And these images are, are real egregious examples. That's why I chose them. So I'm not saying these, this is my best work, but I want to show you what you can do with even a not so good photograph. And of course, with that wide angle end, a lens, you're gonna get that splaying on the edges, that distortion. So let's take this image here, and we're just gonna go in and, and start to do a few basic things. Like we're going to adjust the white balance to a better white balance, just with a one click sort of thing. We're going to add this clear view and watch the left side of the image. It just kind of comes to life as that brightness from the window gets reduced. We're going to add a little micro contrast to just add some more detail without necessarily over sharpening the edges too much. And what else are we going to do? We're going to also add a little bit of vibrancy, maybe a little bit of saturation, just to make it pop just a tiny bit more. Again, these are construction pictures, so they're not going to pop too much. So all that's very good, but I want to show you the amazing feature here with this DxO viewpoint. Now there's a lot of manual controls here, but there's this little this little auto button here. So watch what happens when I press that button. Wow, did you see that? That image was corrected. Now I can actually go down here to the little slide version and I can say copy correction settings. Now watch what happens when I go into this image. I'm just going to paste those correction settings on top of this image. So I'll go paste corrective settings and here again. Now if I want to, want to do something further on here like maybe crop out most of that overblown window. So you have some controls up here and you also have on the side, but one of those controls here is a cropping tool and I can just do whatever whatever I want with it. I mean, you know, it's, this is just a little demo here. So I'll do that. And now I've corrected that image. I can go back to this one here. And here you have that kind of double splaying where you have it kind of the tops are kind of because I took it at the wrong angle are kind of spreading out uh, with just looks horrible. But we're just going to go there and say, well, gee, I'm a lousy photographer, but I have DxO Photo Lab Elite. So I'm going to go paste correction settings and boom, there it is. That's a perfectly usable photo for its intended use and dramatically better. So it's really a very good program. The controls work very well. It has just about everything that I would need. Again, you have all your, your master controls here. On the top you have frequently used controls that are also on the right side. 
on the left you have your image viewer so for instance if I went one to one then I can look at this image and say okay I want to go over here to the cabinets no I want to go over here to this edge or whatever I want to do right I can do all that by using the image viewer um, I also have my EXIF, EXIF data and some presets here I could press this uh, little drop down menu here and add something so let's say I wanted to add a histogram I can easily add that histogram to that site so I can customize this in any way that I want so I think this is a pricey program but I really really like it and it's going to do about 90 8% of what I need to do very very quickly so here again this is not meant to be a tutorial this is not even meant to be a real review of this program because I'm just getting used to it I just wanted to show you that I'm I'm liking it I'm digging this program well there you have it this is the DxO photo lab I highly recommend it. What is the downside or downsides of this program? One, it's kind of pricey. So the Elite version, which includes things like that great denoise program, is about 200 bucks. Um, and the geometry program that I talked about in the demonstration, that's a little plug-in, that is another 60 bucks. So it's not cheap. However, I was very fortunate, so I didn't even realize it at the time. But apparently when Adobe went to its, its subscription service, I bought the DxO, what was it called, uh, Optics Pro, which is the predecessor to the Photo Lab. I, didn't even, I had forgotten that I bought it, but DxO didn't forget, and so I was able to get the $200 software for $88, so I felt that was a great deal. But even at 200 bucks, I think it's, it's definitely worth it. There are some um, other negatives. For instance, there is not a history palette, so you, you give an undo, of course, but you can't necessarily go back in history and change things. Um, the cataloging is pretty simple, but again, perfectly fine for me. And it doesn't have some of these extras, so you can't like make a photo book or do things like that directly from this software. But that's stuff that I probably wouldn't do anyway. So thumbs up for the DxO Photo Lab. I'd say they have a 30-day free trial. Try it out. You might like it. And um, I have found it to be stable and wonderful and good output. And again, it might be enough to, on occasion, get me to shoot raw because that anti-noise program or the applet on the, on, the, on the software seems pretty darn good. Bye, everyone. And if you get some time, please give my uh, audio podcast a listen. It's called Psychiatric Secrets Revealed. It's with myself. I'm a MD, board-certified psychiatrist. My wife's a PhD-level clinical psychologist. And we just talk about a variety of different stuff, from psychology to current events to kids to you name it. I also have a personal writing blog called drmikuna.com, D-R-M-I-K-E-K-U-N-A.com. It's, it's basically a uh, vehicle for me to just express my personal feelings. I'm partially retired now and so I've, I've been going through a lot of angst about what am I going to be when I grow up uh, now looking for the next the next thing and uh, so you'll hear so if you want to read about that that's there I have a great day and I just wish you all just peace bye